Morgan has the same integrations as Google Calendar because it syncs with Google Calendar, but it doesn't have all the functioning issues that Google Calendar has. Morgan also has the filtering availability that Notion has in its databases, but actually is a calendar app, so allows for recurring tasks. It also has the scheduling power of Calendly, but actually has a calendar, not just scheduling links. And then it also has the task features, the basic task features of Todoist, but has a calendar. So it's kind of like all those tools together. I've stopped using Todoist. I've stopped using Calendly, I've stopped using Notion, and I'm only using Google Calendar because it links with everyone else's calendar. Otherwise, I'm using Morgan. Oh, and I should probably say Morgan is essentially free. There is a pro plan, but most people won't need the pro plan, which means it's great for students and other creatives like myself. I also want to add in that this video comes from my IA membership, so if you want to know more about my workflow using Obsidian, using Morgan, and using all the other tools that I have, check out the link in the description below. I use Morgan for literally everything when it comes to calendar, events, tasks, you name it, it's in Morgan. The main differences between the free and pro plan is the free plan you only have one calendar account, whereas the pro you can have as many as you want. The free plan only allows you to have five scheduled meeting links a month, whereas the pro plan is unlimited. The scheduling links on the free plan have the Morgan white labeling, whereas in the pro plan doesn't. You can have 10 different time zones on the pro plan, whereas you can only have two in the free plan. And then you need to be a Morgan Pro to have integrations with Zapier video conferencing and fixed IP addresses for the scheduler, but I don't think most people need those integrations. It's downloadable for Windows, Linux, and Mac. So getting into Morgan this morning, I turned on my computer and pushed Alt-C on my keyboard and Morgan is up and this is my day. This is what's going on. You can see I started the video a little bit later because I had other stuff to do, but this video I'm going to make it full screen so you can see everything that's going on. Going into my Morgan profile for basic orientation, you can see I have my profile, which is Morgan specific. This is my Morgan account email. And then I have my Morgan account information. The main things to note in the general settings are you can change the default calendar. I have it auto selected. So whenever I add something, it auto selects the previous calendar. So when I'm planning something in the research calendar, it will auto select the research calendar over and over. Or if I'm planning something in actions, it will select the actions calendar over and over rather than one specific calendar. So you can see these are the calendars it's brought in from my Google calendar account, which you'll see in the accounts panel in a second. The time zone is self-explanatory. The regional date time format, I have United Kingdom because I like you can see here it's 24 hours. But if you go to English United States, it actually changes it from 24 hours to 12 hours. So this is just a regional time format difference. You can select any day for the first day of the week. I'm the Monday person. The initial calendar view, so you saw the day view pop up in that small window because I picked day, but it could be the week, month or two weeks. I'm a light theme person, but I know a lot of people like the dark mode. So there's the dark mode for you. The day grid start and end time, I don't know if are in other applications, but it's a really nice feature. I have all 24 hours, but if you want to start at 7 o'clock, you can start 7 now, and my day starts at 7 and finishes at 12, which is quite nice for refining what I actually want to see, but because I work across time zones, some things are like 4 o'clock in the morning, so I need to know when they are. The time day resolution can be changed to 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour, and what this does is changes how granular the day gets. So if I change it to 5 minutes, you can see it's, it's now fairly large with some of these events, but if you're only showing, say, 5 hours or 6 hours of your work time, and you want to see every 5 minute interval, you can change that setting. The time dragging resolution is when you're dragging events or tasks up and down. You can drag them in 5 minute increments, 15 minute increments, or 30 minute increments. I stick with 15 because that's normally when I'm moving things around. The limit events per day is specific to the month view. So if you're in the month view and you want to see 20 tasks slash events all there, you can see them all at once. And then it gives you a plus for everything else. So you can see it's now showing 10 task or events per day, plus however many else is there. Now I use Morgan for everything that's tasks and events. So everything is showing. I keep Morgan starting in the background so that when I load up my computer, I can push Alt C straight away for the global toggle and bring Morgan up to see what I've got to do for the day. I only have one Google account actually attached to Morgan, which is this one, and that's what you can do on the free plan. If you're on the pro plan, you can have more accounts, so Outlook or whatever else is going on. And then I have all of my Google calendars here. I can turn some off, turn them on. I can change the name of the calendar inside of Morgan, so it stays the same in Google Calendar, but changes inside of Morgan. I can also change the calendar color to literally any color that I want. I can also change the notification settings for a calendar. So I have a timed event notification, but I don't have an all day event notification. I could add one in if I wanted to. 
Availability is specific to when you're sharing your availability to other people. Now I only look for my events calendar because none of these calendars really impact my availability to talk with other people. So this is the setting in here, which I will cover a little bit later on. The personal booking page I use on my website on my contact page, and this is where the pro plan comes in handy when you want to get rid of the Morgan branding, change to your brand colors, and then add a logo if you want. And now I'm on my website, you can see this is Morgan right here, and this is the recurring meeting link that I have set up. So if I click on that, it loads it up, and it's now checking through my events calendar to see when I am free, just like Calendly would. I've attached my personal Zoom room in here, so it's easy just to add a Zoom room to any link or event, and it also attaches it to the recurring links. The integrations are pro features, so you can see you can integrate with Zoom, Teams, Google Meets, and Todoist, Google Tasks, Microsoft Todo, Outlook, but I don't use any of these anymore. I actually stopped using Todoist for Morgan Tasks, because Morgan Tasks, in my opinion, are just better for my use case. And then you can use Zapier, but I've never used Zapier, and because Morgan has my tasks and events together all synced with Google Calendar, I don't need Zapier. The shortcuts are what make Morgan so good and so much better than Google Calendar because you can navigate left and right with the arrow keys. Day, week, month, agenda, two weeks are all hotkey shortcuts. You can create an event with a hotkey. You can open up Morgan with a hotkey. It just makes life so much easier. So looking at Morgan, there are a couple of buttons that are sort of hidden away. There is a search menu at the top of the screen and you can search for literally any event or task. So I've just typed in football because I play for a football team and you can see I have an event. This is the color of the calendar. So this is an event. This is a task. It's blue. This is an event, 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 etc. And this is in future. And then in the past, I have all of these things going on and you can search for any task or event inside of Morgan. Then there is the calendar workspaces or filters. And what this basically is, is it takes all of the calendars that you have, which are all of these from my Danny at dannyhatcher.com calendar account from Google Calendar. And you can then add in a number. So these are number hotkeys on my keyboard. So if I push zero on my keyboard, it brings up all of these calendars. I push one, it brings up these calendars, two, three, four, five, etc. So I push one, it goes back to here. And what I will do is then I'll push W on my keyboard, which brings up the week view. Then I can push two to have a look at the events and the research things that I need to do. And if I want to have a look at my content calendar, I can push M and then go three. And that's going to show me just my content on a month view. And then I can go straight back to my day view, pushing D and 1. And I'm there. It's so much quicker than Google Calendar or Notion. It's just, oh, I love it. The day button gives you the option to manually change through those views. But I mean, who's really going to do that? You can show or hide weekends. So if I go to the week view very quickly and then show or hide weekends, you can see it's showing or hiding them in the week, the two weeks and the month view. You can widen the current day. So you can see currently this day is wider because I've got this ticked. If I turn it off now, they're all the same size. I like it wider. Then if I go back to the day view, I actually hide all of my completed tasks. So if I click that on, you can see I've actually done some things today. I'm not completely useless, uh, but I, I turn them off. So I've actually done these meds. So what I can do is I can come in, I can tick it off. It gives me some fun fireworks which oh, I love it uh, and then it disappears because I've done it and that's the setting that I have and when I go to the time zone button you can see I'm in GMT but I also have added in two other time zones so it's PST and EST and that is on the free plan the pro plan is 10 and this means when I hover over the time it shows me the time in those time zones so I don't need to like Google PST time Google EST time Google this time for that time I can just come into Morgan and see it straight away it's so much easier there is a manual refresh button, but I don't think I've ever actually pushed this in the year of using Morgan. There are manual arrow keys to go left and right, but why would I do that when I can just use the arrow keys on my keyboard? And I can push today, but I could just push T on my keyboard again, so like, again, never actually use these buttons. There is the sidebar button, which again, I've never really pushed because I push spacebar instead on my keyboard. And then kind of hidden away down in the bottom left, there is a calendar view, which you can jump months in advance. So let's go all the way to October. You can see this is the 21st of October and you can add an event into there. Now I don't want to add an event. I'm going to go back to today by pushing T. So quickly going through the differences between events and tasks, if I click and add something in, it's automatically an event and it shows because it's the calendar, but I can change it to a task by clicking on task. But before I do that, you can see I can add in a tag if I want to. I don't really use tags. That's there because I tested it out. You can add an attendee, which I do when I'm inviting someone to a meeting. You then have your typical all day start and time zones and then you can repeat it. So recurring tasks or recurring events. You can add a location just like you would in Google Calendar. 
Then you can add in a virtual room. Now, because I have my Zoom link account in here, it's an option that I can click straight away, which makes life much, much easier. I can then add in an alert for this event. I can turn this busy. I can make it public or private. I can make it free, tentative or out of office, just like you can with Google Calendar events. And once it's saved, it will sync to my Google Calendar because that's where it's adding it. I can go to the top of the event to change what calendar it's on. So if I want it to be in the events calendar, it's in the events calendar. And that goes back to that auto selection feature that I shared in the settings. If I set an event now, it will then auto select the events. So the last time I changed something would have been the habits, which is why habits were selected. But when I'm adding tasks in the calendar, I don't actually push this button because I mean, I don't like pushing buttons. So I type in task, I push space and it automatically changes it to a task. And then I can add in the task information and you can see the settings have changed slightly. So you can still go all day, but now there's a planned start, a planned end. You can still repeat it just like any other event. There is an estimated duration that is mainly just for visual purposes. And you can add a due date, which is essentially a deadline for the task. So if you don't get it done, it shows up in the task side panel, which I'll share in a second. Then you can add the task to a task list, but the task list only shows things that aren't in the calendar. So for me, I don't actually add anything if I'm adding it in the calendar because it's not going to be in the task list anyway. But the task lists are very useful when planning out what tasks you want to do, which again, I'll get to in a second. You can add priorities on tasks, which I like never do. You can add reminders, change it to busy, private, etc, etc, because the Morgan tasks are still treated somewhat the same as events in Google Calendar, which is why you see that green tick emoji inside of Google Calendar for the tasks. So covering the colors very quickly, you can see this is a red square, but a blue line because it's in the blue calendar, but the red task list. So I double click, it's in the actions calendar, which is blue, and then it's in the creations task list, which is red. This orange blob down here is an event that is synced from the Google Calendar over into Morgan. And this is just an event. So I double click and it's the event that you would see in Google Calendar just in a Morgan view. And you can see there's a very nice link here that you can click and go straight to the call. But when the time actually gets close to the call, i.e. 10 minutes or 15 minutes before, it gives you an option down the bottom right to say join the call and it automatically joins the link to the call. So you don't have to go into the event again, a very small but nice feature. And by pushing spacebar, I brought up my task list. You, now you can see none of these actually have anything showing because they are all planned out. But if there's more medication I need to add in, I will add the medication in here and then drag it over to the view and then sort out when I need to do it. But in this case, research, I have all these different things that I want to research, but I'm not sure when I'm going to do them yet. So they're still in here. Then if I want to schedule it, I can click and drag it into the calendar. I can then drag it forwards in time and I can also drag it backwards in time. Like Google Calendar doesn't let you drag it backwards in time. I don't get that. Uh, but you can drag it forwards and backwards. And if you decide, you know what, I don't want it there at the moment, you can delete the event. Now, this doesn't delete it entirely if you don't want to. You can delete the task or you can unschedule it. So I'm going to unschedule it and now it's back in my task list. At the top here, you can see Morgan, but you can add other integrations. So this is where you have Todoist or Google Tasks or anything else that you're using. But like I say, I use Morgan because it's just easier. And then you have these sorting and filtering options. So you can change the sort order, change the filtering order. I show all the lists because I just want to see everything that's going on. And something very quick before I go to the scheduling, you can see this BASB 14 live. This is a live event task that I've put in, but I created it as an event that repeats and I've chosen it for it to repeat five times. So when you go into the repeated task, this is something Notion just doesn't do. Um, you can actually change never daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. You can then change it for certain days of the week, multiple days of the week or certain iterations. So every recurring instance you can think of is available inside of Morgan. So it's not like limiting at all. Now looking at the scheduling, you can see here is the personal page, which I can then customize or I can embed in my web page, which you saw earlier. The recurrent link, which is the link, the friendly conversations link that you saw on my website. It's public. So if I go three dots, edit Morgan link. You can see all the available slots are in here. This is the meeting link. And then you have duration settings. So how long the meeting is going to be. You can save the event in whatever calendar. I have it saved to my events calendar. No one can book 24 hours earlier. There are lots of different options. I don't want people to book a meeting for me and then me have like an hour to get ready. So I give myself 24 hours. I don't let people book any longer than four weeks in advance because I don't really know what's going on longer than that, to be honest. I don't set a buffer time, but you can do between meetings. This is the availability check. So if I click it, you can see here is the availability settings that I went through earlier. And this is the calendar that it's looking through, which is why all these different events in here that are, look like a very odd color. These are the events coming from that event calendar. 
I have one reminder set for both people, so that's the organizer and the invitees, and that's sent 10 minutes out beforehand. Morgan sends out an email for it. There is the conversation link. And if I wanted to add a time slot, I can come into the calendar, click, drag down, and there is another available slot that's just been added in, but I don't want that, so I'm going to delete that. But if I don't want a recurring link, I can have a one-time Morgan link, so I can click on that, and it gives me the exact same settings to start with, and I can change everything like I've just done with a recurring meeting, except it's a one-time link. Now, of course, Morgan is just like every other piece of software. There are updates that come out and changes that are made, and this video will become redundant at some point because of the updates. So if you want to keep track of everything that's going on, I suggest joining the Discord server and ask all your questions inside of there. And that is also where you can go if you have any questions about how I'm using Morgan or how I'm using Morgan with other apps like Obsidian, Zotero, etc, etc. So I'll see you in Discord or in the comments section of the video.